Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. If you own a Universal Audio Apollo and you have any questions about how to get started, well, this video is for you. We're going to take a look at which Apollo you have, how to use the Console 2.0 software, and how to optimize it and customize it for use within your favorite DAW. So let's jump on in and see how we can get started. When you first connect your Apollo and launch the Console 2.0 app, you'll see a screen that looks like this. In this case, I'm using an Apollo X4. You could see my four Apollo preamps at the top. You also see my SPDIF input, which is for a digital connection, and four virtual input channels. If you don't see the four virtual input channels, go to View and then go to Settings. Click on Hardware and you could select whether you want more DSP pairs or virtual channels available. If your screen doesn't look exactly the same, notice on the top left you can switch between Overview, Inputs, Inserts, and Sends. Overview will give you everything you need, and I use it most of the time. At the top, you have the ability to set the input gain of each preamp. You can switch between mic or line inputs or connect a quarter inch cable for a high Z input. You can turn on and off phantom power, engage a low cut, flip polarity, or even set a pad for signals that are too hot. And right here is where you could put in a unison insert, which are primarily going to be amplifiers and microphone preamps. Let's jump to the bottom. This light gray area is what I like to think of as our monitoring section. These faders determine how loud the signal is coming out of your monitors when you're listening back to audio. You can solo a track so you only hear that one track. You can mute it so you don't hear it at all. And you can pan it left to right. What's incredibly important to understand about this light gray monitoring section is you can have a microphone panned all the way hard left with the fader pulled all the way down and set to mute, and you will still record a signal into your DAW that's panned directly in the center with the full level engaged. This is because it is only the top preamp level that determines what is recorded into your DAW. So think about it this way. The top is where you set levels for recording and the bottom is where you monitor what you're recording. So what's going on in the middle? In the middle is our inserts. This is where you can insert a UAD2 plugin. And depending how you have it set, a blue light will mean that you'll just monitor through the plugin, meaning you'll record the dry signal, but you can hear the plugin for inspiration while recording. If you click that light, it'll turn red, which record enables that plugin, which means that everything is printed with that plugin on it. But if you click it, it'll turn into a red light, which means any insert that you have on that track will become a permanent part of that signal or you can change all of your preamps globally by clicking on the far right side, UAD record or UAD monitor. Underneath the inserts are the sends, and you can see that we could send to two different aux tracks, and you can find these aux tracks on the right hand side. And if you don't see those aux tracks, make sure to click the button that says show aux. Aux tracks are great for sending to something such as a reverb when you have a vocalist recording through your Apollo and they'd like to hear a little bit of reverb in their headphones. You also have the ability to set your sends for cues, and the cues will typically act as your sends to different headphone mixes. So as an example, you could say for channel one, I'd like a little bit going to Q1 or headphone one, I'd like a little less going to Q2 or headphone two, and I'd like none of that input going to Q3. And if you look on the right hand side, you could see there's a lot of routing options over where it says Q outputs. Currently my Apollo has Q4 routed to going to headphone one and headphone two on my Apollo. If for example, we wanted headphone one and headphone two to actually hear what is mixed within the mixer on the console 2.0 software, we could do that too. You just go to the Q outputs and set the source to mix. Now headphone one and two will receive what's going on in the mix. And if you want to dive deeper, such as setting your physical outputs on the Apollo to go to an external headphone amp, you could do that. Go to monitor to output and select a physical output to route into an external headphone amp. Check out my video on how to set up a Hearback Octo with the Universal Audio Apollo for a little bit more about how to set up any headphone mixer with the Universal Audio Apollo. We're going to ignore our SPDIF input for now, but on the right hand side is where we have four virtual channel inputs. I'm going to link virtual channel one and two together so these two mono channels become one single stereo channel 
and I'm going to relabel it X4 CPU so it receives any of the audio coming from my CPU or my computer. Let's link virtual channels three and four and label that X4 DAW so it receives our DAW signal. Now let's open our audio MIDI setup. We'll click Universal Audio Thunderbolt and at the bottom right, click Configure Speakers. Currently, our computer audio is set up to go to monitor left and monitor right, so it basically passes through the console 2.0 app. But instead, let's route that to go to virtual one and virtual two so we can control our computer output directly from the console 2.0 software. One last step, make sure to go into your system preferences, select output, and make sure to select the Universal Audio Apollo as your output. Now, by doing this, we can play back audio on our computer and have it routed through the console app. This is great for doing something such as having iTunes come through the console app to be able to play back reference tracks for artists while recording and much more. We'll take a look in a second as to how to set up our DAW to be routed through the console app. But first, let's go up into menu, go to view and go to settings. Let's go to our IO matrix. And since we changed the virtual inputs, let's rename those. X4 CPU left, X4 CPU right, X4 DAW left, X4 DAW right. The IO matrix allows your DAW to see different labels than what the default labels are. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll call it X4 with virtual labels. Now in the bottom right, we also have to save our session, which saves independently from the IO labels. This is going to save the setup on the mixer, which includes things such as plugins that are inserted on each channel. It also includes all of the labels on the console mixer. Now you can see I switched out my Apollo X4 for an X16, but if you look at the top ruler, it appears like the Apollo X4 is still connected. Go to menu, go to settings, and then go to hardware. Click the Apollo X4 and then hit remove. Now don't worry, when you connect the X4 later on, it'll automatically be added. But for now, since we only have the X16 connected, we want to remove the X4. So let's see what an X16 looks like. As you'd expect, there are 16 analog inputs. But what makes an X16 dramatically different from an X4 is you don't have those Apollo preamps. And you can see that preamp with the level knob is now missing from all of the channels. Once again, just like the X4, we could take our virtual channels, link them, and relabel them. And just like we did before, we'll go to menu, go to our settings, go to the IO matrix, and relabel these. But what's especially important on an X16 is since you don't have those Apollo preamps, we're going to want to go in and put a custom name for everything that's connected directly to the Apollo X16. So for instance, input one has a Rupert Neve Designs 5211. So let's call it 5211 left. We'll call channel two, 5211 right, channel three, Mikey, channel four, 6176, and so on. Don't forget to save that so that you can pull it up and not have to relabel it every single time. Changing the IO matrix does not change the mixer in the console 2.0 app, so we'll go through and label each one of these. Once you do, don't forget to save that session to be able to pull that up at another point. Remember we were talking about those aux ends? Well, you could see on my aux channel, I've now put in a pure plate reverb, and I could send to that pure plate reverb using aux one on input one. Once again, this is great to be able to send a little bit of reverb to the headphones of people while recording. Just make sure to also send to the cue from the aux channel so that they can hear it through their headphone mix. Okay, now let's see how we could get set up in a DAW, and we'll start with using Logic Pro. So notice, if we click an input, we could see all of our inputs for our Apollo. And if we click an output, we could see all of the outputs. But they're just generic inputs and outputs. So let's go to the top, click the Mix menu, and then go to I.O. Labels. You can see that all of our labels are selected to just be generic channel labels. Input 1, Input 2, Output 1, Output 2. But select them all using Command A, and then click Provided by Driver. Now, all of the labels reflect what we set up in the console 2.0 app using the IO matrix, which is great because it means you'll actually be able to see the exact hardware you have connected to your Apollo. And if you wanted to create your own user label just for a session, you could click user and then next to it, type in the name you'd like, like guitar input. 
Now, when we select an input in our session, you can see they've all changed over from generic to reflecting what the Apollo has. And the same thing goes for our outputs. We can see that the outputs are no longer generic, but I actually carry over the names from the Apollo. Now let's see how to properly route the audio from Logic through the Apollo. Go to Preferences, then go to Audio. First, let's make sure our output device is set to Universal Audio Apollo, or Universal Audio Thunderbolt in this case. And if you click on I.O. Assignments, you can select exactly which output you want to use on that Apollo. In this case, let's use output 2324, which is that DAW output for the virtual channel that we set up a while ago. Let's use that so that we can mix it within the console app. I added an Apple loop just as an example, and as you can see, our logic output is now coming through that DAW virtual channel that we set up. And now we can use the fader on the console app to be able to balance that DAW output level. And furthermore, you can use your sends to be able to send that DAW to different headphone mixes. But what if you don't want to deal with all of these virtual channels that we've been discussing? Well then, don't worry about it. You can have your system audio go straight through the Apollo. Or in the case of Logic, just click I.O. Assignments, and for output, select Output 1 and 2, your stereo output for your Apollo. Now you can see nothing's routed to our DAW virtual input that we created, but you can see that signal is still coming through the console app. And for those of you that are connecting outboard gear, being able to properly label your Apollo and be able to have those names carry over into Logic is super important, especially when using the I.O. plugin. For example, you could set the output for the I.O. plugin and have those labels carry over. In this case, I'll output to line one and two, and I'll set my input to my Rupert Neve Designs 5060 to bring the audio back in. Do your latency detection and make sure that your outboard gear is properly connected. Just remember when using the I.O. plugin, you have to now bounce everything in real time because it is running through outboard hardware. Let's see how to set this all up in Pro Tools. Just like in Logic, you need to set your playback engine to make sure that the Apollo is selected. Once you do, you also need to set the I.O., just like you do in Logic. In the case of Pro Tools, make sure to select and delete all of your inputs by hitting Command-A and then hitting Delete. Then by hitting Default, it'll use the default names that we created using the I.O. matrix on the Apollo. Do the same thing for your output and do the same thing for your bus. Now currently we have the Pro Tools output going to monitor left-right, which means that the audio will go straight to the meter on the console app and straight through our Apollo. But if you want to use your DAW virtual input, that's easy. On your bus, instead of selecting monitor left-right, make sure to select your virtual channels that we created. In this case, you could see him saying DAW left-right. By understanding these basic concepts, you should be able to set up any DAW that you'd like to use and get up and running with your Apollo in no time. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.